studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, who is concentrating strongly on something this food, morning. Food, food, food. Steve's here. Steve is here. <laughs> and Miriam, too. Okay. Also, New York Times bestselling author, John Gilstrap. The, uh, yes, food. These, these are high. <laughs> you are. Chef Steve and Chef Miriam brought um, recipes or in, and um, stuff you can, you can buy and, and real food over there. And some solid food, too. This is a heavy box. Uh, Steve, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. In. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Chef Merriam, good morning to you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to have you with us here from Blue Ridge and the Culinary Institute. What is this? Is uh, These are looks like donuts yep. and a, a wedge of something that looks like it's really yes. quite to hearty. So what we have is uh, we have a pumpkin blondie. And oh. since everything pumpkin spice yeah. nowadays, everybody loves pumpkin spice. Sure. Pumpkins, anything pumpkin. So it's a pumpkin blondie, and we have some apple... Uh, was it apple cider donuts? Apple cider donuts. Apple cider donuts. These are these are heavy. Yeah. Well, the donuts are light, but yeah. the how do you get zero calories inside something that's this <laughs> rich? It. Isn't it something? Yeah, it's actually one of our courses. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean by blondie, Steve? Well, so uh, brownies are usually have a, they'll have a brownish cho okay. chocolatey color okay. to them. Mm -hmm. This this will not have that in. I it. see. So okay. it, it, it you're basically taking a cocoa powder or any chocolate mm -hmm. out of it. But you can add like we we'll, typically in a blondie you would have like a white uh, white chocolate or a, a butterscotch, uh, you know, into it. Texture similar to a brownie? Very similar. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. So a couple things here. We know that uh, Thanksgiving is the 28th. That's uh, two weeks and one day from today. So I got to get a turkey recipe from either of you before you leave the show today. Can we lead off with that? How's the, what's the best way to prepare a Thanksgiving turkey? Spatchcock. You know, PJ Orsini was just talking about that last week. It's uh, it's almost foolproof, and it doesn't take you know a hundred hours to cook in the oven. Um, at least freeze your oven up for other things. Um, so make sure that you defrost your turkey early. <laughs> really early right um, about a week before uh, Thanksgiving if you have a frozen bird you should have it out sitting in the refrigerator and starting to defrost um, then the process is to um, break it in half so you take out the backbone and you literally butterfly the bird um, I suggest that you brine or marinate it I usually use um, apple cider and different spices um, some citrus, some cinnamon, um, and a lot of um, hot peppers and things like that then to put a little bit of contrast in there uh, for at least 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Then dry it really well and put it on the grill. How long do you cook it on the grill? Depends on the size of the turkey. Yeah, give me a little formula. Let's, let's say it's a 20 pound turkey. So normally you're looking, um, you've got bone in, so you're looking maybe anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes mm -hmm. uh, per pound. but it depends on your grill, right? How hot are your coals? You know, there's a hundred variables in there. So the best way to do it is um, put it on the slowest part of your grill, get some good color on it, check it often with a thermometer. Um, I suggest you do that from the underside so that you have that beautiful presentation and you don't have holes poked all over the skin of your turkey. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then just keep really keep a good eye on it. Grill lid closed or grill lid open? Um, oh, well, I, I do it open. I have an Argentinian grill at home, so um, I do it over the open fire. But you can certainly do it um, uh, with a closed grill. That will cut down on your cooking time. So again, you need to be uh, cognizant of that. And then, of course, the true thing that really makes a moist bird is you have to rest the bird. Um, so don't pull it out and expect to serve it in 15 minutes. You've got to pull it off the heat set it aside cover it and let it rest for about 20 minutes to at least half an hour that's at a minimum i'm so hungry right now yeah uh, so you know Miriam does does a great a great uh turkey you know i i you know that with that particular method but i have a little bit different way to do it what do you have so i usually i usually do it um the last couple of years we've been doing it because i uh, my wife is indian so we and we have a lot of indian friends so we i do a turkey tikka masala so I marinate the turkey overnight in spices and yogurt. Uh, and it typically I would just use the breast. Uh, I wouldn't use any of the other parts of the bird. Mm -hmm. um, and we would marinate it overnight, and then we would bake it in the oven. And it's, it's like one of the most flavorful, amazing pieces of meat that you, you could ever try. Uh, that's one of the things that I do. Yogurt, you said? Yeah. What kind of yogurt? Uh, so we, we use a special, there's a, a, a special yogurt that we would buy, uh, Indian community, they call it dai. Uh, we would do that. 
uh, um, you could use a Greek yogurt is perfectly fine. And then you would use the special masalas or spices that, mm -hmm. that you would find in, in a typical tikka masala recipe. And you would just, instead of putting it in a chicken, you would put it in, uh, into a turkey and, and ma massage it inside the breast, inside the skin, the level on top and bottom and inside and all that. And then we would just bake it in the oven, cover it to start, and then we would take the uh, tin foil off uh, right before uh, for maybe about 20, 30 minutes. We had uh, an oven that died uh, on a Thanksgiving a couple years ago when we were having people over. Mm. Oh, that's Fortunately, we have good neighbors. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. And my wife was in a little bit of a panic state at that point. I would imagine. Yeah. So uh, uh, give me a good side for Thanksgiving. I think everybody usually has some kind of sweet potato yam kind of a recipe of some sort. Yeah. My youngest child um, will not allow me to um, deviate <laughs> from certain sites on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So there's the usual. There's the um, French mashed potatoes. There's the sweet potato casserole, uh, which is actually a recipe that my mother-in-law gave to me when I came here many, many years ago. Um, so that gets done. Uh, there's mac and cheese, right? Because you can't have Thanksgiving without mac and cheese. Well, you could, but not according <laughs> to my child. <laughs> and, um, and then there's the green beans. Yeah. Green bean casserole? Or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think like the mushroom I'm, soup? Yeah, but I'm a chef. I make it from scratch. Okay. Of course <laughs> you do. I, I, and no cream onions? Uh, well, yeah, you do the crispy yeah. fried onions on top. Yeah. yeah. Crunchy. Mm -hmm. but, but just not the, uh, the creamed uh, individual onions? No. Okay. No. I think everybody has their own little little twist yeah. on, on Thanksgiving. Everybody is has that a West certain. Virginia thing? No, it's from uh, Massachusetts. That's one of my wife's. Uh, I've adopted it over the years. It's, okay. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I alienate my family <clears throat> every Thanksgiving because one of my requirements comes from childhood. If you don't have the cranberry sauce that has the ribs from the can still in it, <laughs> <laughs> it's just not that ready made. Cranberry I like sauce. I like the cranberry relish and all that, but but that, that the, the ribbed uh, can, right? Yeah, it's yeah. got to be there. Hey, I, it's uh, obviously Thanksgiving in, in two weeks. I know you got a few things you want to make sure you promote here too, Steve, including yeah. your podcast. Go right ahead and do that. Yeah, so you know we have a. Uh, Miriam and I have been doing a podcast probably, I checked back and we've been doing it since uh, 2022. It's called uh, What's Brewing at the Academy and it's, uh, you can get it on any of the podcast uh, uh, sites. Platforms. Yeah, all the platforms. Okay. And uh, we, we partner together and we've, uh, I think we have a really good show. Um, I sent you guys, I think I sent you a link mm -hmm. on one of the shows that we did. We just completed one yesterday. It's a really nice uh, format. We have segments, we have different segments. We go through each segment, we talk, we joke, we laugh, we have a good time we with try it. To Form. Yeah, and our 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 uh, we we try to keep it to under thirty minutes, but we usually go a little bit yeah. more, probably 35, 40, 40 minutes. Um, and we we bring industry professionals into the into our room, and we talk to them about what they do and how they do things, and uh, try to be insightful and give information to students and foodies and people all out there and anybody that wants to listen. It's uh, I think it's a really nice little little show. We I actually like walking. Uh, my wife and I we walk a lot, so we we turn that podcast on and we just walk for like 35, 40 minutes, and we're just listening to the podcast. So it's it's a lot of fun. And what's it called, Steve? What's brewing at the academy? What's brewing What's at the academy? Brewing, B R U I N. Oh, like the bear. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Because okay. that's the name of our cafe. Is yes. the brewing, brewing cafe? cafe. Yeah. Well, I yeah. like that. That's a good catch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Miriam. We talk. Uh, Miriam talks a lot about. We we talk about tools, right? We talk about yes. safety and sanitation. And Miriam, Miriam, we love to talk about tools with Miriam because Miriam buys everything. I do. I have a lot of gadgets. <laughs> so so she always has something new to talk about and something that maybe we don't even know anything. We didn't even know it, it was it even existed. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's it's a very interesting podcast. If you guys get a chance to to, to listen, definitely, please do. Let do me we go learn back. To cook something at the end of the podcast. Is there a recipe? We talk about recipes. Yeah, we do. Too. What was the one we talked about yesterday? We talked about uh, Bas the bass tuna stew. So this time of year, people are making, starting to think about pork goulash and beef bourguignon and um, all those types of things. Irish stew, and this is just a version um, with that's made with tuna. Um, it's hearty, it's flavorful, but it's not heavy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's lighter. It's a very, very old bass traditional uh, recipe. Um, so when the fishermen used to go out, they would start the soup, and as they went along, they would add to it, and at the end they'd put the tuna in, and they'd have a meal on, on the boat, and then they would bring their catch back. Um, so that's where it comes from. Okay. And this is tuna from the fishmonger, not tuna from the can. 
Okay. Yeah. Yes. This um, is this is you, actual. Yeah. Okay. okay. So here's the difference. It's not king of the sea tuna. Please don't do that. Please don't. Um, but if you decide that you, some people don't actually like fresh tuna, and mm -hmm. they don't know how to cook it, and they're not sure when it is cooked. So they're more comfortable with tuna out of the can. Mm. Uh, buy the very best Italian or Spanish canned tuna that you can find. Uh, you can either do it in water or olive oil. Drain it really well. Gently separate it and use that. Notice, Bill, she said Italian tuna. I noticed that, yes. It's, um, I salute you on that one, <laughs> Miriam. I'm all in favor of more Italian food products. Before yes. we go too far out to sea and talk about all these exotic uh, fish. Where you're quite comfortable, I might add. I am very comfortable. I love fish. I love the sea. But let's go back to Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, and you both recommended a way to cook a turkey. Mm -hmm. What happened to the good old Norman Rockwell turkey, where you had the full bird that cooked in the oven, you brought it out as a reminder as a kid in tennessee mm -hmm. our thanksgiving was rabbit that would kill that morning yeah. and a fried chicken but never the turkey i always wanted the turkey so thanks my lovely wife <laughs> our thanksgiving is a norman rockwell turkey uh, i carve at the table by the way yeah I, you know i don't think that that's really gone away i think i think traditions stay 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 in place in 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 many families um i think what we provide is an alternative sure because that's a standard that's a classic that's something that doesn't change uh we we, we provide some alternatives if you want to grill a turkey frying your turkey was a big thing back in the day it's probably still is pretty much uh but you know, we just we just want to offer different different versions of it, but that that's that that's always a classic. I feel much better, thanks, Dave. Stuffing, <laughs> stuffing, stuffing in or stuffing out? Oh, stuffing in. It has okay. to be stuffing in. Okay, so because that that brings up to us. It, um, yeah, here's a thermometer. <laughs> yeah, for us it brings up it brings up red flags. You test the yeah, stuffing as well as the bird. Please yeah. don't poison yourself. Bill. Yeah. Hey, I want to ask you to uh, promote your holiday goodies shop, too, because the proceeds sure. benefit the Culinary Academy Student Scholarship Fund, if you uh -huh. could promote that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we have a, we have two uh, holiday goodies shops coming up. One is uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is – we have orders uh, we're taking up until November 21st, um, and we have a bunch of items on there. Uh, we have uh, uh, French onion cheese balls. We have uh, bourbon maple pecan pie. We have apple dumplings. No, pumpkin pie. Bourbon uh, maple pumpkin pie. Bourbon, yeah, <laughs> bourbon maple pumpkin pie. Yeah. Yes, uh, and we have French macaroons that we're making. We have cheesecake. We have uh, cranberry bliss bars, uh, soups. We have uh, butternut squash soups. I and this is just for Thanksgiving. And anybody can come in, order this. You can order it online. You can order yes. it on the phone. Uh, and you just go to our website, and um, I imagine we can post it, post yeah. it at some point. Do you make everything on premises? Yes, everything is made from scratch. It's made by students. It's made by chefs, and it's it's just it's it's a really nice thing that we've been doing over the last couple of years, and it's it's gotten bigger and bigger every year. Uh, we also have a holiday uh, one is coming up as well, which is more Christmas or holiday oriented, and that is good. Our deadline order on that is December twelfth, and we have gingerbread houses. We have chocolate dip pound cake we have uh, more french macaroons uh with seasonal flavors we have hearty vegetable soup we have a, a cheese ball we have our cookies our boxes of cookies we have one pound box of cookies amazing all fresh all homemade uh we do that and uh can't get away with chocolate macaroons and one of our biggest sellers last year was proof and baked cinnamon rolls mm -hmm. uh amazing and you could do that in the morning of they are phenomenal. Such a such a great. Food. What is the key to getting the macaroon to not be flat when you're trying to make macaroons? Ah, no, I'm going to let the baker answer this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's it, French macaroons are well, coconut macaroons are, are relatively easy to do. It's it's really hard to to not do those well, uh, but French macaroons are are relatively difficult, especially for for a novice. If you mm -hmm. you have to do it multiple times to get it, and it's not so much the process; it's the end result. You have to. Uh, there's a certain amount. There's a look that you have to have with the macaroon. It has to be able to sustain itself, but also uh, any ribbons need to be absorbed. So you want to have a nice flat surface. And some people will say count 50 100 times folding count 150 times almost every chef has a little bit something different and it all depends on the recipe that you're used to and there's tons and tons of recipes out there uh, it's really a look and uh, we do teach that we teach french macaroons in classes for students and 
it could it could it could vary students could vary because of maybe they didn't turn it so many times maybe um they jumped the gun a little bit or uh, but we we have our instructors around and we try to make sure that everybody has an equal amount and and is doing it properly mm -hmm. uh but it's 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 a it is a rather difficult thing to do consistently correctly steve are most of your students uh looking to go in a commercial mm -hmm. shelf or the some of them doing it just for personal satisfaction well, I mean, I think the majority of them, uh, majority of them, want to go into the industry and they want to be very successful. Mm -hmm. They want to be chefs. They want to be owners, uh, food trucks, or or brick and mortars. Um, and uh, I just think it's it, it it can be hobbies for for a small percentage, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but uh, but the vast majority want to go into the industry. And honestly, the the industry needs them. We are in desperate need. How many students do you have? Currently, we're we're running about forty five. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, um, and that changes uh, you know throughout the year, uh, and uh, we have spring enrollment happening now, so we have more students coming into the culinary program. We have four programs that we we, we uh, feed into, uh, and then uh, the fall is like our big push. You know, fall we have a lot of high school students, and we have uh, uh, adult students coming into the program as well. So yeah, it's a very strong program. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was in. I it was in France about a month ago mm -hmm. on vacation. We took a food tour while we were there. And on the tour was a macaroon shop. Yeah. That's all that was in the shop. And they had these things on display like it, like they were jewelry. Mm -hmm. Just like you would have jewelry on display yeah. in a shop in America. They had mm -hmm. all these different flavors. They were delicious. Yes. They're very proud of them. They're, they're not inexpensive. It, but it's, they're delicious. It's a, it's a, it's a very difficult uh, macaroon or cookie to make. Uh, and and they're they're treated like gold. You're absolutely right. Uh, I think uh, in certain places, I, I'm, I'm not sure what price they had there. I imagine it was quite high. But uh, say you go to Tyson Corner and you can find you can you, I mean you can find macaroons at Costco nowadays. Sure. You know, uh, but uh, it is yeah. it is very expensive. It's actually it's actually nominal to make. I mean, it's they're they're making tons of money off of it. But it's 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 a hard cookie to yeah, do. There's a skill set there. Yeah. That you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the appropriate snobbery Absolutely. from the lady behind the counter. Absolutely. So you have to have it. Well, if you're French, you, you know, you're born with yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I remember when we were went to Florida and we had, I asked, uh, can I have, do you have any fr uh, any uh, sweet wine? And, they, and the Frenchman said, he said, we don't have sweet wine. We have fruity wine. <laughs> hey, uh, are you still doing the program on Saturday uh, for Thanksgiving side dishes with Chef John and Chef Robert? Yes, yes. So uh, that is uh, that is going to be an amazing class. So we have that, and then uh, Chef John and Chef Robert's coming up. Uh, Chef Miriam actually has a uh, India yep. class on India coming introduction up. Introduction to India. Yeah, introduction to India coming up, and that's a, that's going to be another amazing class. Uh, we have a holiday high tea couples class coming up. Uh, Chef Jen is doing that one. If I can just say that is just becoming such a tra tradition. Ho holiday high tea. For, yes, yep. for people to yep. um, do, and so you get maybe grandmothers bringing their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. You get fathers and daughters. Yeah. It's such a mm -hmm. sweet event. Where do you it do really it? Is. Um, at the college, um, we have our cafe, mm -hmm. uh, which we take all the tables out and different things, and we set up in there like a, a tea room. Very nice. Um, yeah. So it's just a lovely, lovely event. Mm. That's yeah, we've, we've had fun. We've had fun doing it. Gingerbread house class, I can't get rid of that. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then there's a, a really special class on Tuesday, November 26th. We have a Master Chef Junior class for, for kids. Uh, uh, I think it's from 8 to 12, 8 to 12 year olds uh, with Chef Gabby and Chef Vanessa. Uh, they're off that week, I think, for Thanksgiving week. Mm -hmm. Give the kids something to do from 1 to 3 and go take a master chef class learn to make simple and nutritious snacks for before and after school yeah. yes that sounds like fun we just um started our really getting into our junior classes master chef classes mm -hmm. um in the past two semesters mm -hmm. um we have a very uh, young but dedicated faculty yeah. and um so i think it's a, maybe a little the kids connect better Mm -hmm. with them you know when you got crusty old woman like me with a big hat on it you know um and so uh bill's crusty being... you're, you're not crusty bill's crusty <laughs> <laughs> uh, take pride mary okay <laughs> i've always enjoyed um, the crust <laughs> i love crust and um and so the, the kids come in for these classes they have a blast mm. they absolutely yeah. love them yeah. um so they've really been successful 
Yeah, especially the yeah, Halloween cupcakes great. class. Yeah, they all come in in their costumes, and it's a it's, right. a, it's a lot of fun. Again, and what that's an annual event. Yeah, yeah, that's that's marvelous. Uh, have you, have you been this active doing these kind of classes since the start of the uh, Culinary Institute, Steve, or is this built over time? Well, I th- you know when I first started it, I was a force of one, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was doing everything, and mm-hmm. uh, and and as the years gone come through you know we have people that come in you know like chef miriam and all of our other chefs that uh, that are in the mix now and they bring their own little little bits yeah. of their world and uh and it's just expanded and to where it is now and it's we have such an amazing uh plethora of information that we want to give out to everybody so as a proliferation of cooking shows had a big impact on enrollment yeah, one minute left yeah uh you know cooking shows are 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 a huge plus to us i think one of the biggest things that we have with students is that it's great to 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 watch cooking shows and everything, but we want to make them understand that this is a profession, <laughs> and 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 it's it's not all fun and fun. You know, it, it's it's is a lot of hard work. It's work. You know, yeah. yeah, it is work. Yeah, right. absolutely. <laughs>